So this is the Mazda Millennia. It was a Mazda production car until 2002, I think, when it ceased production, and it was sold as an executive car, so it was pretty well made. But it does hide a secret. Actually, it hides several secrets, but this is the one that I'm interested in. It doesn't use a normal engine. It uses something called the Miller engine. The Miller engine was invented by Ralph Miller in, I think, 1957, and was used a lot in ships and stationary power supply, and Mazda decided to chuck it into their vehicle. Now, the thing about the Miller engine is it's a very efficient engine, and it gains its efficiency because it varies the compression through the engine cycle. Now, there's quite a few ways of doing this, but one way of doing it is by varying the stroke of the piston itself. Now, something like a variable piston actually has an awful lot of interesting applications. One would be, for instance, in a variable pump, and one would be in a CVT. If we can vary the length of the piston stroke, we can actually create a CVT from it, and we've done that in previous videos. But in this video, what I thought I would do is concentrate on the variable piston and how to create a variable piston. There have been quite a few different ways of doing that, but I've chosen one particular way. And in order to accomplish that, of course, what I've done is drawn up this in Tinkercad, being a variable stroke piston. Of course, these files will be available on Thingiverse, and there'll be a link in the description. But let's get on with it and print that out. First bit we need to make is the gear cage, and you'll see that these two tubes, one long, one short, take the short one, pop the gear cage on top of it, then rest the gear on the actual gear cage, and then take this axle and shove it through the gear to the bottom of the short tube. Like that. Then we need to put a spot of glue on there to hold that gear in place. When you've done that, take the short tube, glue that bit of the gear cage to it, take the long tube, glue that bit of the gear cage to it. When they're glued, drop that back in, feed that on the top, and you'll see some pegs, glue the, two peg uh, glue the four pegs to each other to create a cage around the gear. Actually, I should mention, this is all made out of PLA, and almost universally use this stuff, which is crazy glue for PLA, because it glues the PLA stronger than the original PLA. So I use that, and I use a two-part system, spray it with that, and it sets immediately. But once you've glued that together, what you do is feed it into the eccentric. Now, the eccentric has one smooth side, and one side with a rack gear on it, and it doesn't matter which way around this goes, but you feed that, into the eccentric like that. So when you've done that, if you turn the handle, it works the gear and this centre slide slides in and out of the eccentric. Now, of course, the eccentric needs putting into the piston, which is that bit there. It slides in there and then that slides on there and that will be a tight fit. So we need to fit that in. Once it's fitted, if you hold the outside, of course, it should turn freely in there, with that being able to turn up and down on that. And now we can put it into the cradle. And there it is in the cradle. Now we have a couple of caps and they have this bit sticking out. That faces inward and glues on there with another one gluing on the back there so that it's like that. Once you've got it like that, there's a spacer ring that goes on that side and then the flywheel goes on there. That'll be quite tight to force on. And then on the end here, we've got the actual articulation for the piston itself. That goes in there, the pin goes through and there's a clip to hold it in place. That's that bit finished. Now we need something to output, really. And for that, we've got the output cradle. It's this cradle here, and there's an output guide block that gets glued on there. To space it properly, we've got this bit, which glues on there and lines up with that there. And that keeps it in line and the right distance apart. And then we've got the output rod, which feeds through the block and into that section there, and then gets glued in place. And that's it all put together. Now, with this inner um, axle twiddled around so that the slide is at the top, then when we turn the flywheel, or if we like, we can also turn the axle on that side, what we get is the longest amount of travel because the centre here is furthest away from the eccentric. But if we then twiddle that down so that we get it so it's now in the centre, so it's sitting right there at the centre of it. 
then when we turn the flywheel, of course, we get no movement at all. So we can go from no movement to basically any kind of movement that we want in between those to change the length of that throw. So set about halfway, we get about half of the throw. And then, of course, set at the full weight, then we get the whole of the throw and we get the longest distance that that can travel. So what we've got here is a variable piston. A variable piston, as I say, has a lot of uses in engines, in pumps and in CVTs. Now, as I said before, I will put this onto Thingiverse should anybody be interested in it. I might have gone a bit crazy and made it big, but you can shrink everything down. It's certainly easy to see how it operates this way. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe. That's really quite cool.